welcome to this service of remembrance for those whose names are recorded in the memorial book, for those who have been lost at sea and for whom there is no known grave. We meet here today to give thanks to God for the lives of those lost at sea and to remember with affection all those who have no known grave but the sea but whose memory we cherish as we pray for their families and friends and all who still grieve their death we pledge ourselves to work for greater safety in all seafaring and to support all who work to save and preserve human life we thank god for the work of the maritime foundation and for all who have given so generously of their time and effort in founding the memorial book kept within this church. In this 100th anniversary year, we remember those aboard the many naval and merchant ships tragically lost at sea during the final year of the First World War, some of whose names are recorded in the memorial book. And especially this year, we remember the 19 officers and crew who lost their lives when the oil tanker SS British Crown exploded and burned while loading cargo at Umside in the Persian Gulf in 1966. We also remember that deaths at sea continue to occur almost daily, most notably at the moment among refugees escaping fear and persecution and migrants seeking a better life. We remember them all. And so now, as we stand, let us pray. Ever-living God, we remember today all those whom you have gathered into the peace of your presence. We hold before you those who have lost their lives at sea and for whom there is no known grave, those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Enfold them in the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and in the glorious company of the saints in night. Amen. Would you please sit for our first reading? A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. A prayer for the departed, and on this 100th anniversary year, for those lost at sea in the Great War. O Lord our God, from whom neither life nor death can separate those who trust in your love, and whose love holds in its embrace your children in this world and the next, so unite us to yourself that in our fellowship with you we may always be united with our loved ones, whom we still miss dearly. Amongst the many we remember today and pray for the repast of the soul of Mike McMullen, a Royal Marine who disappeared during the transatlantic single-handed race in 1976. Give us courage, constancy and hope through him who died, was buried and rose again for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for the seafarers who many of us will be acquainted with. O eternal Lord God, you alone spread out the heavens and rule the raging of the sea. Be pleased to receive into your protection all those who go down to the sea in ships and occupy their business in great waters. Make their voyages safe and protect their vessels and cargoes from all danger of the sea. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord of life. Amen. And now a prayer for the work of the Maritime Foundation and the Maritime Volunteer Service. O Almighty Father, Lord of earth, sea and sky, those whose livelihood is on the sea, they recognize the wonders of the deep. Hear us as we pray for the work of the Maritime Foundation and the Maritime Volunteer Service. Bless all who work to promote the safety of those who travel upon the seas and the ocean. Keep us ever mindful that we are your children and that un underneath each of us are your everlasting arms. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we draw our prayers together by joining in the words of the prayer which Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.
I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Some words from the reading from Isaiah that we've just heard. When someone dies, and especially if they die young and in tragic circumstances, we need to hold hard to their name. In our memories, their name helps them to live on. We need to be able to use that name as we remember the things that they did and the things that they said, all the things that were good and unique about them, and the relationships we had with them as a parent, a child, a spouse, a friend. We can use their name too in prayers for them and when we ask others to pray for them. And of course, another way to preserve their name is to have it written down. Most of you here today have come to remember someone particular whose name is entered in the memorial book held here at All Hallows. In this book, even though they were lost at sea and have no grave or gravestone to record their name in the usual way, their memory is kept and treasured. This year, 20 new names have been added to the book. One, Albert Neil Howe, was killed in action during the Second World War, lost from HMS Woolsey off the Dutch coast in 1940. The other 19 were all lost from the oil tanker, the British Crown, after a catastrophic explosion at Umside in Qatar in 1966. The tanker had nearly completed loading 25,500 tonnes of crude oil, and the fire that followed the explosion burned for two months. All these 20 men, men who tragically lost their lives, many at a very young age, are remembered by name and valued here today, as indeed are all those whose names have previously been carefully inscribed on earlier pages of the book. Amongst them this year, the 100th anniversary of the end of the First War, we remember especially those lost at sea during that terrible war, nine of whose names are recorded in our book, but all of whom, of course, are due our gratitude and our remembrance. They're all remembered by us, and they are also known and loved by God. Our reading today from the prophet Isaiah talks about God calling us each by name. I have called you by name, you are mine. In the ancient world, if you gave somebody a name, that was a way of acknowledging that the person was your responsibility, that you were offering them your protection. So when God called the people of Israel by name, it was a bit like a, an adoption ceremony, with God as the parent and Israel as the child. God would be their God and they would be his people. And so God says to us here today too, I have called these men by name, these people who you love but see no longer. They are all as infinitely precious to me as a child is to a father. They are mine, they are under my care and protection. When a tragedy occurs, we often want to question how God could have allowed it to happen. There are no easy answers, but I think it does help if we can look at it from the other side. God doesn't take away danger and pain and loss, but he does promise to go with us through whatever we have to bear. Our Bible reading was written at a time when the people of Israel were undergoing great loss. They had been defeated and taken away from their homeland into exile in Babylon. Jerusalem had been utterly destroyed by their enemies. So they'd really lost everything. They'd lost their homes, their land, their temple, which was incredibly important as the center of religion, the place where they thought God resided, uh, their neighbors, their family members, their whole identity. But in this reading that we've just heard, Isaiah brings them a song of hope, the hope that one day they will come home, that they will be restored. 
And in the meantime, they're told that God goes with them no matter what. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. The passage doesn't promise that there won't be fire or flood, but rather that they will not be faced alone, that with God they will not be overpowered. The writer is probably thinking of the story of Moses leading the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt by parting the waters of the Red Sea. I expect you remember that story. Or the story of the companions of Daniel who were tested in the fiery furnace. And of course, if we look to the New Testament, we see the ultimate demonstration of God going with us through simply everything. God himself, uh, in the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, shares in human suffering and yet is not overcome. God himself, in the person of Jesus, has experienced human pain and death. But the good news of Easter is the victory of love and goodness over them. Those that we remember today also had to pass through water and often fire as well. We name them before God, knowing that they are his children, that they are under his care and protection, that they are safe with him. For the names from the British Crown, we're especially grateful for the efforts of Graham Wallace, who has been the driving force in making in this book a suitable memorial altogether for those who died in that disaster. But we also remember all the others, as our reading puts it, everyone who is called by name, knowing that they are precious in God's sight, loved and honoured. Because he says to us, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Amen.
We give thanks for all those whose names are recorded in this memorial book. We keep their memory alive in our hearts and minds and pledge to work for a more peaceful world. Amen. into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.